Okay, so we're going to be looking at the dynamics of zip lining, basically analyzing how to set up the height differences so that you stop at the perfect moment right before the end. Um, it's really important so that you don't go flying past the start, but you also don't want to stop in the middle because it's just not as fun. So we're going to be looking at basically how the height differences work and how that affects everything. We're going to be doing this by analyzing the first half of the ride until the uh, lowest point as an energy conservation problem and the second point as a mass acceleration problem. Um, so as you can see here, kind of getting to the lowest point and you start to slow down. So the first part we're going to analyze is that first section up until that lowest point. You can see right here, this is basically the little uh, piece that houses the zip lining. We're going to be looking at this as a slider, so we're going to have two different tensions, the friction going against the direction, and then the mass pulling down. So here you can see everything a little bit better. Uh, we have the two different tensions. Um, we're going to have the friction going along in the opposite direction of you moving. Uh, we're going to have two different angles. The different angles are going to change over time as well. Um, here's our assumptions. We're going to have a non-elastic rope. The person has a cylindrical mass. The zip line is a slider, not a wheel. And it's in a vacuum with no air resistance, just so that doesn't cause a moment. Um, how it's going to work is we're going to start up high. Uh, you're going to start giving yourself a little bit of an initial push to get yourself going. Uh, and then you're going to start sliding. That's going to cause your weight to shift just a little bit in front of the slider to start pulling. So because of that, we're going to have an initial velocity that is non-zero. We're going to have an initial omega that's non-zero because you're rotating about the top piece at that moment. And we're also going to have a height that's not zero. This is the lowest point in the body. This is where you're going to reach maximum velocity, and this is where the acceleration is going to switch from accelerating you forward to starting to break as you get up and you start moving upwards. Um, so max velocity, as I said, our omega is going to be zero here because you will have rotated to the point you're going to be in. You're going to kind of hit an equilibrium in the rotation, and you're also going to have a zero h. Here's what the equation looks like. L here is uh, the distance that you traveled. It's a 100 foot rope, so we're looking somewhere around probably 70 to 80 feet um, that you zip line, and then everything else is shown in the diagram. Now we're going to be looking at the second section, which is that mass acceleration part. Uh, this is the part where you're going to be starting to slow down and basically breaking right before the end. As you can see, I didn't make it all the way at the end, but that's kind of good for my safety. Because of that, we're going to have an I bar alpha, and we're going to look at this more about the rotating about the slider. Uh, and then we're also going to have an acceleration in the x and an acceleration in the y. Here are those equations for that. we got all of our angles and our friction forces in there. Um, well, again, like I said, we're going to do an I about uh, center of gravity plus that MD squared because we're rotating about the slider. Um, so as you can see here, this is kind of everything coming into play. We're going to be calculating this. It's changing over time, which is why we use conservation of energy because we're really only interested in those top and bottom two points. We're going to be using what we saw from that first part and able to apply those equations to the second one so that we can solve uh, that, that mass acceleration problem. Um, it's really important to be able to solve problems like this, especially in zip lining, because if you don't, you're going to get hurt. Um, we're actually going to see next a little clip on basically why this is important and what happens if you don't properly um, look at these problems and don't properly 